this is this is going to help you when you are uh, making decisions like like in sort the present decision okay 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 i think that's good that's good so so uh in a sense uh yeah, yeah. we can just yes yes sorry uh -huh. yes Babuka? Be... yeah continue Babuka. yes okay go just ahead Babuka. like what Shegu just said what Shegu said it's like traditionally the costs are divided evenly okay but in a in activity based costing the costs are divided proportionate to the amount of electricity the the, the two products they consume respectively yes so it is so just like i was explaining the cost was divided according to the products need for the activity this the activity here is the 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 processing uh, of 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 the of the of the, of the uh, products you know the the production aspect of it so the production activity is what we're talking about so uh, during the production of lemonade, it's able to use one unit of um, one kilowatt hour of electricity, whilst the, the, the burger uses three. So naturally, if you have electricity bill, you will not be fair to, to charge both products equally. The other product uses more of it than the other one. So why should you charge the same overhead to, why should you charge equal overhead to, to, to them? So the traditional costing technique, that's what it does. The absorption costing in particular, that's what it does. It will charge equal overheads, equal electricity bill on each of those products. When in actual sense, that will not be correct. What will be correct is each and every product use demand on the activity is what is factored so that you can be able to do the costing properly, okay? So let's look at uh, some of the points uh, quickly before we move to, to uh, uh, answering the question, okay? So, right, so the video Hello, was Mr. talking about... Please, if, Hello, you to, please, if you want to talk, you raise your hand, please. Okay, Mr. Favana. Yes, Usman. Yes, in activity-based costing, it use more than one over OAR. Yes, certainly you have yes. to use more than one OAR, yes. But in the absorption costing, it use only one OAR. Maybe yes. that is it's the base. It's, it's, yes, it's usually, it's usually one OAR or departmental OARs, like we have seen in the first question that we answered. So it can either be a company OAR, which is one OAR, or a departmental OAR. But in activity-based costing, the overheads are based on the activities, production activity, selling and distribution activity, heating activity, lecturing activity, and so on and so forth. Okay, is that clear? Okay, okay, so let's move. Uh, so like I said, uh, what has been spoken about on the video is about uh, overheads, and the overheads is Electricity, electricity cost, okay? Which is to be divided between two products, that's burgers and lemonade. Burgers are, you know, usually you can make it from beef, you can have a beef burger, you know, chicken burger, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, and so on and so forth. So that's meat, so naturally that's supposed to consume more electricity than, you know, lemonade. Lemonade is just like, uh, it's just a drink. You know, if you're going to uh, prepare a drink, we'll, we'll, it will take um, uh, only, you know, very little, um, uh, it will consume little electricity compared to when you have to do meat, okay? So, uh, of course, like, um, when the, in the video, it was described that if you have to use absorption costing, you need to give um, you, you, your basis of uh, apportioning maybe number of units, which may lead you to uh, sharing the, uh, the electricity or the overhead costs equally between the two, you know, and of course, uh, you have to remember that um, three kilowatts of electricity is what burger is using to produce each, whilst lemonade is only one, so you can't compare one is to three. So when we're using ABC, we know that um, um, we, are, we, are, we are using, we are sharing the electricity, the electricity cost based on each product's use of electricity. 
Okay, as simple as that. Right. So let's compare between A, B, C. So now that we we've um, we've looked at this, that's why this video is very very important. It tries to it tries to practicalize, you know, the concept of A, B, C versus the traditional method. Okay. So um, just like in the video on the A, B, C, it looks at cost objects. Cost objects, like I said, they are you know, products or services, customers, et cetera, department or whatever. Okay, so it is assumed that cost objects, before they can come to being, will require some activities, okay? Um, what is actually being done to bring the cost objects to produce the product, in this case, what actually is going to be done to produce the burger or to produce the lemonade, you know? Um, so those activities, one of those activities we have seen is the uh, uh, how to call it uh, the production of the of, of the lemonade itself using electricity. Okay, so those activities will consume what resources, financial resources, and so on and so forth. So A, B, C, you have to go through activities and then resources. But when you look at the traditional costing between cost objects, it's just direct resources. So you oppose on the resources based on the cost objects. That's why you usually use what. Uh, the unit product, the, the, uh, the, the number of products, and um, all maybe uh, hours, you know, and stuff like that, okay? So there is no activity. So the allocation is based directly, whilst here the allocation is done through the product's consumption of the activities. Okay, is that clear, everyone? Is that clear? Yes, yes. Okay. Right. So let's look at the comparison between absorption costing and ABC. Okay. Um, using cost pools, you know, in absorption costing is one or a limited number. That's um, your overheads. Is you usually uh, you usually use just one. Okay. While in ABC, you can have various overheads that you can use to oppose them, you know, like overheads for production, overhead for uh, heating, overheads for marketing, overheads for, you know, packaging and so on. Fatu, you, I'm sure you have two appliances on at the same time. That's why it's echoing. You have to switch one of them off. Yeah, and you need to move, please. Thank you. Right. So um, we're trying to compare absorption costing and ABC. Um, it's a volume-based cost driver, okay? Um, like the units, the number of units, the number of hours, so it's volume-based. While the cost driver, uh, 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 how to call it, um, is activity-based, okay? So the, the rate, the, the cost driver rate or the OAR is volume-based for absorption costing, whilst for ABC, it is what? It is based on activities, various activities, okay, as we have seen. Um, it's, of course, suited for labor-intensive, that's for absorption costing, whilst if you want to go into, you know, more mechanical stuff, capital-intensive production, you will use ABC, okay? So ABC, uh, absorption cost in other words, is limited, okay, maybe to traditional production techniques. But if you need sophisticated, capital-intensive, machine-intensive production, you know, and then you want to be able to uh, do your uh, um, overhead apportioning using ABC, you cannot be able to, if you are, if you are into capital-intensive, you cannot be able to use absorption costing, okay? So that's why absorption costing is... Um, uh, kind of a cake is is old fashioned, but it's still useful as to, to be used as a benchmark for other costing techniques. Okay, uh, its benefits is simple and of course it's inexpensive because there is not much you know efforts you need to uh, do when you're doing your absorption costing. But that of ABC, it's it's uh, of course um, you know uh, complicated because you need to do. You need to go down and then try to break those costs, those overhead costs, you know, into their various activities. Usually, when we are recording overheads in our books, they are not by activities. Okay, so 
you need to go into the financial statements and try to break those overheads into their various activities. So it's cumbersome and you need, you know, uh, uh, how to call it, um, you need highly, you know, uh, uh, how to call it, specialized people to do it. That's why in the West, you have some accountants who have specialized in implementing ABC for companies. Okay. So it's really, really important. Okay. So cost assignment, you know, uh, overheads, uh, overhead costs, first to determine and then second to product or services. They are the, the allocation. Okay, so this one, the allocation or the assignment is done first to the activity or cost pool and then second to the products or services. Then the focus of course on absorption costing is on managing cost of functional departments or responsibilities, whilst the focus on ABC is managing processes and activities and the solutions of cross-functional problems, okay? So ABC is more useful because uh, it goes in details, you know, tries to, you know, uh, dissect the cost elements into their various, um, uh, uh, how to call it, um, into their various activities. So that's why it is very, very useful for um, bringing solutions to, you know, uh, cost problems in an organization, okay? So, um, any questions so far? Uh, we're going to go into the steps that we need to follow before we can execute our ABC system. Okay, any questions, please? Okay, so far so good. Are you following? Are you understanding? ABC is a bit complicated compared to absorption costing. Do you understand? Yes. Okay, so you are yes, happy. Yes, we are following very well. You are happy we move? Okay, you understood very well. Okay, so shall we move? Yes. Okay, excellent. Now we're going to look at the steps that we need to follow uh, when we're doing ABC. So the first step is we identify an organization's activities. That's the starting point because it is what? Activity based costing. So you must identify the organization's activities. Okay, so next we collect the cost of each activity. That's the difficult part because to find the cost of the activities, you may not find that on the financial statements. Okay, so you, you, what, you will, what you will see on your financial statement will be electricity cost. Okay, factory cost, this cost. Okay, but those costs, you need to go and break them down into their various activities. Okay, so number three is to identify the factors which determine the cost driver. The cost driver is the size of the cost of the activity. So you identify the factors which determine the size of the cost of an activity. Okay, and these are what we call our cost drivers. Okay, and we'll see some of those cost drivers. Okay, for example, if you're talking about uh, UTG incurring some uh, cost to pay their staff, their, their lecturers. What do you think will be the factor, okay, or the element that will determine how big or small the salary payment is? So that's what you call a cost driver. So what, what will determine the size of the cost? of lecturing to UTG? Simple. Yes, it's over now. Yes. Can I come in? Yes, 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 go ahead. I think the number of courses a lecturer is taken. The number of courses lecturers are taken. That's one. Uh, if in case the lecturers are paid yeah, hourly, yeah. The, 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 the lecture hours, okay? Um, if in case um, the, uh, the lecturers are paid according to the number of students they lecture, the number of students, because partly UTG you consider, because uh, when you take oversized classes, you paid extra, okay? So all those are factors, all those are cost drivers for uh, staff costs for UTG, okay? So we'll, we'll get more examples. 
So the fourth stage is to assign cost of activities to those products, okay? To the product demand for activities. So when you look at it, um, it's very similar to the steps that you, you undergo when you are uh, uh, calculating absorption costing, okay? Like for example, number three, to determine the size of the cost, okay? will mean to, uh, 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 how to call it, uh, uh, to calculate what, your OAR, okay? And then number four will be to uh, uh, apply your OAR, that is to do the actual absorption. So the same thing, number four will, 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 will equate um, that when we're looking at absorption costing, okay? So four is to assign the cost of activities to the products according to the product's demand for those activities. So we come to see how this works when we do our example, when we do our work. So um, some of the cost drivers, some of the activities are here, and uh, these are the cost drivers. For example, if uh, an organization does ordering, you know, they order products on behalf of other customers or so, or the, the ordering department of, of another company. So the cost that will be paid to the staff of the ordering department will be an overhead. So what will determine the size of that overhead, the ordering cost? It may be num the number of orders that have been placed, isn't it? It may be the number of hours that the ordering staff have you know, uh, worked, isn't it? But if it is going to be an efficient costing technique, it will be the number of orders that have been placed by customers. Because you could you could be at work for hours and uh, you've not um, <laughs> you've not generated any orders, is that clear? Yes. Good. So, material handling, the number of production runs, production scheduling, dispatching, lecturing. You know you can have and so on and so forth. So, uh, let's brainstorm over this. So. Each of you are working in different organizations. Let me just select. There is somebody who works for GRA, Mr. Cham. Mr. Cham, at GRA, what do you think will what 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 do you think will determine the size? Let's say um, what 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 activity can you think of in GRA, and what will be the cost driver, Mr. Cham? The activities we do is uh, to collect tax. Okay, tax collection. For the, for tax collection, yeah. Okay, not only tax collection, you have um, some other... Like 16 hours. Um, some other departments do different things, isn't it? Okay, well, for tax collection, for example, you know, um, let's say there's an overhead in tax collection as an activity. What will be the cost driver or cost drivers, possible cost drivers for, for that overhead? Ibrahim? Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, if, if you, if you, if you uh, uh, collect tax, okay, people are responsible for collecting tax, and as such, it, yes. it costs GRA to collect tax. So the, yeah. the cost, to GRA cannot be directly attributable to any of your product, but it will be instead an overhead, isn't it? Yes. Okay, so if it is an overhead, what uh, cost drivers can be used to determine the, the size of that overhead? One, the number of uh, staffs employed by GRA. Mm. You are collecting tax. Yes. You GRA can employ many staff, but will that translate to uh, more taxes being collected? Yes, it it could be. But it could be yes. it employs a lot of staff. Some are just there, they're not they're not working. <laughs> so that's a possible you are right. that's, that's a possible cost driver, but um Give me another one. 
that's uh, okay. The time staffs to, to 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 collect the tax the time. Okay, that may be a possibility, but in my opinion, the best will be uh, uh, the number of clients you collected tax from, because that's that's direct. You know, you know, you can have you can have a staff who goes to work. I mean, the whole day he does not collect anything. Is that not possible? Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So the best cost driver will be, you know, uh, uh, how to call it, um, uh, the number of uh, customers that you know uh, you are able to collect 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 tax from. Okay. So yeah, that's yeah, the number of taxpayers. You are right. Yes, yes. So I'll take another example. Afrisal, Ibrahim Tawale, you work for Afrisal, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Tell me, tell me your your possible overhead cost, which is uh, based on an activity, and uh, what 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 will be uh, a cost driver that will determine the, the size of, of the of that overhead. Um, like the CUG service. Hmm. The CUG the CUG service. Okay. Close the, user group. Close user group. Okay. Yeah, the it depends on the number of customers that. Yeah, the service depends on the number of customers that actually registered for the CUG. Okay, but in the number CUG, what, what, activity, what, the what CUG. activity do you undergo as you know as a staff of uh, Africa? Um, re registering like uh, customers ah, that are interested. Customers, in exactly. So that will be an activity. So registering customers on the CUG program. Okay, so yes. registering customers on the CUG program could be an activity which will definitely have an overhead cost attached to it. Okay, so what 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 will be the cost yes. driver? Possible cost drivers? The customers that registered. The number of customers. Okay, that's good. The number of customers will be the best. Thank you. Yes, Yusuf Abaji works as uh, uh, as a GAF staff. That's I, I take that to be uh, Gambia Army, yeah, National Army, yeah. Yusuf? Yes, uh, it's, yes. That, that it's might be a complicated one. So, <laughs> Gambia Armed Forces. Gambia Armed Forces, exactly. So, so um, I know you you are a service provider, but um, can you think of? Um, <laughs> Uh, can you think of anything? Do you work at their finance department or you work in front line? Uh, I'm negative. I work at, a, at the training school as an instructor. At training school as an instructor, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah if I were you try, when, once you qualify, or even before you qualify. Try, uh, okay, try I was thinking group. like, like basically, uh, I'm uh, Mr. Popper now. Yes. Hello, Mr. Yes, go ahead, Yusuf. I was thinking like, okay, during the like basically the number of recruits that you are going to at uh, at the school and the cost. It is <laughs> like. I like that. Okay, I like the number that. of uh, recruits that you are going to be that are going to be admitted to the armed force. Oh, okay. So, so what what will yes, be the activity? The what what, what will be the activity that will attract cost? What like will be the activity that will attract cost? March. What will be the activity, especially for the training school? What will be the activity? Training recruits, isn't it? Training recruits, isn't it? Okay, because training like recruits the, the, the number of recruits that that have been trained. Okay, yeah, okay. The, yeah, training recruits it depends on the number of yeah the recruits that will be uh, yeah. Okay, good, good, makes sense. Yeah, exactly. So makes sense, makes sense. Uh, just, uh, just looking at some names here. Yes, but Gamdel, what has Gamdel to offer us? Gamsel. Gamsel, sorry. Yeah, yeah we can. Because you, you do the products and services. So there is, a, there is a good example. 
uh, our interconnections can be a cost to us, and also roaming can also be a cost to us. Okay, so what would be what would be the activity, and then what would be the possible cost drivers? It depends on the number of staff that use. Okay, so what activity are we talking so about here? You have you have a, a roaming service. Um, we have a roaming roaming service. To open. Yes. So maybe the staff who will be responsible for uh, connecting client, connecting customers to roaming service, because I yeah. think probably you you have to connect people there. And yeah. also, uh, what about the you know the the selling of um, SIM cards? You know all those. Selling. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. So yeah, good. So I think just to save time, um, let's move to the last one, um, the banking sector. Uh, I said to M Seca, Standard Chartered, the Golden Bank of the Gambia. Huh? Yes, Mr. Fofana. You agree that you are the Golden Bank of the Gambia? Yes, <laughs> I do. But uh, your, your your market share is being eroded. Huh? Your 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 competitors are they they are doing a lot of work, you know. Well, we are working on something big as well. Uh huh. Okay. Good. So so tell us uh, what what um, you know activity you know uh, do you do that attracts overhead costs, and uh, what are the possible cost drivers that will determine the size of the of the overhead. Mm, client onboarding. Uh, client onboarding, exactly. So what is client onboarding? You, you're using these your technical jargons. What is client onboarding? Opening, opening accounts for clients. Ah, good, good. That's a good one. So that's, that's, a good, that's a good one. So opening accounts for clients, you know, is a service that is uh, provided and of course it attracts, um, it attracts costs, it attracts overheads because you cannot directly trace it to any of your products. So therefore it is what, it is an overhead. So what, what are you know, uh, some of the uh, cost drivers that will determine the size of it? Number of employees, um, number no. of employed. Number of employees? No. Client onboarding, you, you're talking about, isn't it? Uh, I mean, uh, trying to open, uh, opening new accounts for clients, isn't it? Yes. The size of the cost should be determined by the number of clients you onboard, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So that should be that. Okay. So actually, I, I did these practical examples just so all of you can understand what is... Um, cost driver and how do you apply it uh, in practice. So I hope everyone is clear about it, yeah, before we move. That's the essence of this exercise, yeah. I, like I said at the start, I'm not here to teach you uh, theories. Uh, you go and memorize and pour on example. No, I want to teach you stuff. I want us to discuss. It's not in fact teaching. I want us to discuss, you know, things that will have impact on our life as a professional accountant, okay? So this is not about passing exams, but I, I really want to make an impact on your life. You know, um, whatever we discuss here, whatever we learn here, I want to see you doing it, you know, applying it, if not all, but I think some of them in, in your life. You know, mostly what um, uh, students do is they just learn to pass exams and they drop everything at the, at the, at the gate of the university. That's, that's not good. You know, and accountancy is a live subject. You know, it's dynamic. It's every day. Whether you work as an accountant or not, it has a bearing on you. And like I said, if you know how to go about it, you don't have to hustle to get employed. You know, you can be, you know, uh, 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 you can self-employ yourself, you know, if you know what you're talking about. We've spoken about um, activity-based costing. Uh, you know, uh, in fact, that's what we are on now, you know, so um, I, I told you there are accountants who are, you know, who have specialized in, you know, um, implementing activity-based costing for organizations. So, you know, you could easily make uh, money, you know, uh, from there, you know, and so on and so forth. So, um, please, you have to bear with me. We, we need to, 
you know, be as practical as possible so that um, you can have uh, a thorough understanding of the subject and uh, not only the theories, but the, the practicals, you know, as well. Okay, I, I hope that is clear, everyone. Mr. Fofan. Hello. Yes. Ah, they don't read the full terms to them. Sorry? I mean, to be fair enough, what is our first drivers as a full time student? <laughs> as a full time student. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what 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 are some of the what what are some of the activities that um, you undergo as a full time student? The number of classes are per week. The number of the number of lectures you have per week. <laughs> the number of lectures per week. <laughs> okay, that's a good example. <laughs> that's a good example, Fatu. <laughs> Okay, okay, so, so yeah, let's, let's, let's move on. Yes, sorry. Maybe the fares to come to school and also the number of copies, notes you, you know, that could be the cause like. Mm, the fares. So, so the activity will be what? Um, uh, commuting, to, commuting to and fro to school, yes. If, if, if that is the activity, yes, you could say uh, the, the, not only the cost of the fare, but also the, 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 the lunch, you know, the, like the, the food cost, you know, and stuff like that. Yes. So that's, that's I think that's, that's a good example. Okay. Right. So, so let's move because actually we have a long question to, to work with, you know, um, it's going to consume a lot of time. So I want us to, you know, complete it today. Right. So benefits of ABC, uh, we've seen on the, on the, on the, on the video, um, you know, Clearly, uh, we know ABC, um, by using ABC technique, your overheads will be shared accordingly. Okay, it, it has been mentioned in the video. So um, the overheads will be shared fairly, okay? Uh, so that each product can get its, uh, its genuine share of the overheads. And that is beneficial in especially when you are setting up prices. Because if we had used the same basis for sharing overhead between burger and lemonade, then that means the price for the lemonade will be what? It will be inflated. The selling price for lemonade will be inflated because we have included some overheads into the price of the lemonade, which we are not um, realistic. Okay? And as such, what's going to happen to the burger? The burger price will be understated because the overheads that is supposed to be charged to the burger has been understated. Okay, can you see? Are you with me? Yes. Yeah. So because it it can because it opposes overheads fairly, it is very 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 useful in management decision making, in pricing decision you know, in costing decision, because when you know the breakdowns of your cost to that minute level, then you'll be able to control. But if you don't know the breakdown, how are you going to be able to uh, control? So management will not be uh, able to take uh, fair decisions, okay? So it provides a reliable indication of long run variable uh, product cost, okay? It helps in understanding of cost because you will um, you will break the cost into their various uh, facets. Okay, so it provides a more logical basis for costing of overhead. It's more logical because it is realistic. Okay, so these are some of the benefits of ABC. So limitations? Um, well, is it worthwhile? Because you have to undergo some cost, you have to involve accountants to come and break all these costs you know, so you need to look at cost versus benefit. You need to do your cost benefit analysis, okay? And if you think it is um, cost beneficial, it's worthwhile, then you go ahead. But I know for uh, in a situation where you, uh, where you use complex manufacturing techniques, it will be worthwhile, okay? But for maybe ordinary businesses, it might not be worthwhile, but you always do your CBA, your cost benefit analysis. 
Okay, so um, of course, because you, you, you deal with data that is generated internally from financial statements, it may not be that useful because it is historic. You know, financial statement data is always what historic, is always past, okay? But it's still useful, but it is a limitation. Okay, fine, the concept is um, you can read and understand it, but in practice, sometimes it might be difficult to put into practice compared to the other techniques, okay? So, and of course, it focuses on allocation of cost rather than minimizing the cost in call. But in actual sense, you could, since uh, you'll be able to know uh, how cost will be allocated and uh, you will have a fair allocation of cost uh, by using that technique, you will be able to control, minimize costs. Yeah. So, any questions before we go to our example? When we, when we answer this example, then we will have a good understanding of it. Okay, any questions, please? Okay, in the meantime, I want you to get this question. So if you have it on your computer, can you pull it out? If you have printed it also, can you make sure you have it in front of you? And for those of you who have not, um, who have not um, um, got the lecture notes or are not able to print it, you may have to screenshot it. So I give you one minute to screenshot it before we start. It. Because the reason is I'm not going to project it. What I'm going to project will be the spare seed that we're going to use to answer. Okay, I can't project two screens at the same time. Can someone send it back to the WhatsApp group, please, if anyone is having it? Yeah, you can screenshot it here and send it to the WhatsApp group. Easy. Mr. Uh -huh. Screenshot it here and send it to the WhatsApp group. Yes. Yes, sir. Can you provide us? Yes, go ahead. After, maybe after class. Sorry? 